Hi, this is uh, Pramod Chaudhary from batch of 1971 mechanical. Welcome to your reunion, the batch of 1982. Reunion after 25 years is a very great occasion. You meet your friends, you exchange the notes and you also meet each other's families. I wish you a grand success to your reunion. What I was really impressed with the project which batch of 1982 is launching, uh, really a legacy project, very innovative idea, that offering the joining bonus to the young staff members. You know, people try to make more and more career in the private sector, but we need a good staff because we owe our academic progress to our professors, our teaching staff. And I think this is the most appropriate gesture which your batch is launching. I am sure that many IITNs will come forward and contribute to this unique activity of collecting the corpus for this purpose. I wish you all of you a very good luck and very happy 2008. Bye. Good morning friends. Uh, we have today the privilege of a brief visit by one of our alumni, Pramod Chaudhary has been a successful entrepreneur uh, who has set up and uh, runs Praj Industries in Pune. Many of you would have heard of the great things that Praj has done. But today, more important to us is the family behind Praj. So I have great pleasure in presenting to you uh, an alumnus and our friend Pramod Chaudhary. Hello. Uh, his wife Parimal and their son Parth. So, Pramod, thank you very much for agreeing to spend some time with us on the camera. As I said, we would like to publish this in the next news at IIT Bombay. Uh, I would like to begin with asking you for reflecting briefly on your days in IIT. Uh, was, uh, I can say only wonderful days and uh, really enjoyed. I say that whatever the development happened, personality development happened, or career I could build, I give a lot of credit to IIT. In fact, me and my wife Parimal, we have published a book, As Is What Is, and there's a very important chapter on my IIT days. In fact, uh, that expresses what I really feel for IIT in uh, true affection, in my shaping my own career and personality. Wonderful. Which were the years you were here on the campus? Uh, I joined in 1966 up to 71, five years. Uh, I was in Hostel 4 and I did my mechanical engineering from uh, IIT. So, uh, if I recall, those were the days when uh, most uh, young people, typically middle class people, would seek jobs and be happy in a career. Uh, to think of entrepreneurship in those days, particularly when Earning money was not exactly considered a great activity in India. How did you think of becoming an entrepreneur and what were the uh, initial uh, uh, hurdles that you had to pass? No, but uh, two things. In fact, you forgot one part that 80% uh, of my classmates went abroad. That was the first uh, uh, aberration or a system or practice which was there. Yes. So, some of us who stayed back. Uh, I did some job for some period to get experience, hands-on experience. I started my career on the shop floor because I always believe that I must have some experience with the workers or the handling of manpower. That was a great experience. And the dreams of being on, being on my own really were uh, developed or got shaped uh, in the lawns of main building. Always uh, with the evening, I uh, during those uh, exam days, sit there with a couple of friends and dream what can be done in life and how one can do a, something different and something of your own choice. So those are the dreams. But of course, uh, as you rightly say, that middle class background, there was a limitation in terms of capital and all those things and the encouragement was not very high from the point of view of uh, starting on my own. So I did work for about 8 to 10 years. During that period, I also got married. And definitely when I uh, wanted to be on my own, my wife uh, really supported me in those uh, moments of uh, uncertainty. And I think that's how we started in, I started the uh, Praj in 83 December, 84 beginning. Some people are curious about the origin of the name Praj. Is it an acronym? Or uh, it is a partly acronym. Basically, I, uh, one of my cousin brother was with me. He's also ex-IITian. He is a 77 batch, uh, he was civil engineering, he was working in Middle East. 
he wanted to come back to India and his name uh, is Raju. So Pramod and Raju, he coined the word Praj. He worked for two, three years, but he found that the working in India was not that uh, comfortable. So he decided to go back to Middle East, but the uh, name, the legacy carried and then it became Pramod Karaj. <laughs> <laughs> Pramod Karaj is a wonderful interpretation. Thank you very much, Pramod. But uh, I'd like to ask you one more question. By the way, it's a very important point that you made that uh, during the time when he was graduating from IIT, a large number of people used to go out uh, to West. It is natural because young and ambitious people will always go from place of low opportunity to place of high opportunity. Now India is perceived to be a land of great opportunity. But during the time when he decided to stay back and fight it out here, I think kudos to you, Pramod. And also kudos to your family for supporting you. Uh, before we end with you, I would like to just ask you a, 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 for a small message for both the alumni friend, particularly the younger alumni, and more importantly to the students of the institute. Uh, well, uh, entrepreneurship uh, is a very exciting subject. I mean, I talk to, uh, I can talk, talk and talk on that subject. But the main thing is, of course, uh, one has to have that perseverance, patience and uh, some kind of innovation in uh, doing things. I think these three things, apart from anywhere you require hard work and efforts are of course an assumed thing, but innovation, persistence and patience uh, is a good recipe to really be a successful entrepreneur. Whatever business you choose, whether uh, in IT or in any other service industry or in manufacturing industry. <coughs> but these are the three major parameters which I feel are very crucial to uh, be a successful one aspect also comes to my mind is that a good amount of anticipation or uh, advanced planning with multiple choices. I always consider entrepreneurship or for that matter career building is a game of chess. Like you make one move, you imagine what can be the move from your opponent and then you have multiple solutions for those moves. So you got for one move almost 15-20 uh, solutions coming in front of you or back of your mind. I think that's one of the very important thing in success in career or in professional life. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Pramod. I would like to particularly request all our young students here, as well as the alumni who have passed out from the institute in recent years, while you seek your careers, they could be in jobs or they could be in entrepreneurship, but if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, please do learn from lives of people like Pramod and the message that he gives, I think, of perseverance, of innovation, of planning and of execution, extremely important. Thank you, Pramod. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, so, <coughs> your initial... So, Parimal, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, uh, if you recall, Pramod was just mentioning that he uh, actually participated in a job for some time before starting up. And in those days, entrepreneurship was not an easy choice to make. And you have been with him right from the first day. In fact, you must have participated in the early planning or whatever. So what were your experiences in those days? Mm, that's a, a trip down the memory lane a long, long way. Uh, with Pramod, marrying him as a job person or a non-job person, it was the same because he always carried a resignation in his pocket all the time. So it was just a matter of time that he'll give up a job and start something on his own. And he always wanted to start on his own, although it was not very clear what he wanted to start on his own. But he did start, so it was a matter of time that he would eventually come up to do what he wanted to do. And as, as you say, what did I do in help? I mean, what does a wife do? She always supports. Does she have a choice? No. Uh, and uh, of course, the planning bit of it, uh, I was involved uh, in the sketching and planning. But otherwise, it was all his game, really. Particularly if you consider that, if we consider that you yourself had a very great, uh, uh, should I say, career before you, if, if you wanted to, because of your background. Uh, variety of uh, uh, things that you had yourself done. No, I married him when I was 17. So much of my education I did with as his wife. So oh. that was a huge enterprise on my own. And I was very happy that it was allowed, quote unquote, allowed to do what I wanted to do. In fact, all my fellowships and all my education which followed was after marriage. So he did his thing and I did my thing and it couldn't have been better. That's really wonderful to know. You know, now that Praj is immensely successful and we all feel proud of it, 
uh, it's, a, it's a matter to sort of relax and but during the early days, there must have been ups and downs, as 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 would happen in any other entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, how did you manage to to survive with the grit that is required? It was very clear that without your total support, he could have cracked sometimes under pressure. Mm, for one, his uh, threshold for cracking up is very high, so the cracks never really showed up at all. Uh, two is uh, because uh, the budgets and everything were laid out well on time, we never never really went out of our means to live. So there was no promise of a huge world that you wanted to be in was not there. Uh, so one, his excellent planning and two, not having too ambitious a plans for ourselves. It was a passion with which he was following what he wanted to do. So it was okay and I had tremendous trust in him in the sense no matter what, he will find a way out. So that has been the better saviour than anything else. Thank you, Parimal. I hope uh, my friends will note two very important points that she made. That A, she was completely confident of uh, the planning. More importantly, they never lived beyond their means in the early days. It's a very, very important self-discipline, uh, which the young entrepreneurs particularly, I have seen some of them getting the first round of funding and squandering that money on variety of things. I think it's an extremely important lesson that she, she has for all of us. Uh, thank you, Parimal. I think she also points out that the confidence she had comes out of the confidence that uh, Pramod himself had in, in the activities that he planned. That is one thing about IIT. You know, IITians are extremely confident about themselves. I often say jokingly that even mistakes that they make they make them very confidently, <laughs> isn't it? Parim? Yes, absolutely. But they are very nice people, isn't it? Uh, yes, but the <laughs> trouble is first of them to accept that they have made an exit. Yes. If they once accept it, they are the best ones to fall, get out of it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Parma, uh, welcome to uh, the news Break. that I Break the mic there. By your name, uh, to, to the center. Yes, I'll give you mic. Okay. Check. Are you done? Uh, I got it. Right. Yeah, this is okay. the tone. All right. Okay. So, friends, Path is the Gen Next Chaudhary, and we are very happy to have him here. So. <coughs> We know not only how our alumni spend time creating new entrepreneurship, but we would also like to know the aspirations of the Gen Next. Us. My pleasure. I understand that you are studying in Syracuse, working towards entrepreneurship and management. That's something. right. So, you know, you have seen, of course, from the childhood how the uh, your parents have grown the industry and so on, and you come with a different and fresh thinking about life as compared to many others. What are your aspirations and how do you see uh, those aspirations now telling with the aspirations of the nation and how do you think it can mutually contribute? Okay, firstly it's very strange to grow up from my generation because you've seen this transformation in the country in terms of, I mean initially it used to be that brain drain phenomena. So now when I, even when I'm in America and, and you meet uh, a lot of fellow Indians, there's a lot more uh, hope of going back and using the 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 education that they've gained for the good of the country and not just for themselves so i think i'm part of that little uh, group that wants to come back and do something whatever it is i mean whether you want to be a young entrepreneur or you just want a good job i think uh, it's important that you're going back to the country that gave you this education in the first place so i think i, I like to be part of that group wonderful uh, any particular thoughts about uh you know, other contemporary youngsters of your generation, I mean, this confidence that you exhibit is exemplary, uh, but sometimes one wonders whether all young people of your generation have exactly the same amount of confidence in both themselves and in their society. So I think, again, like I said, we're in a transformation phase. You have some people who are still in that mentality of going there, and I don't blame them. There is more opportunity outside at some places, and I don't blame them. But uh, 
it's a mentality shift. I think uh, sooner or later everyone's going to realize that uh, not only is it, I mean, yes, there are, you know, streams of patriotism to come back and all, but you're stupid if you stay outside anymore because this is where it's at now. India's, I mean, it's going to be a practical decision, not just based on, you know, self-patriotism or whatever that is. It's going to be a practical decision that you better be here because everyone else is coming as well, not just Indians. There are a lot of other people setting up shop here. So I think... Uh, it's it's going to happen very soon and I, I find that a lot in my own friends who don't talk anymore about uh, you know going abroad there but you know what they're going to set up wealth creation or value creation in this country and it's a good change I think so friends this was path and uh, I think we should be particularly happy to note the streak of both the confidence in the dreams and uh, it's, it's a very very satisfying uh, thing to note that the Gen Next is thinking about working in India not just for the sake of some ideas which are very close to our chest but also as a practical alternative. So thank you Parth. My pleasure. Thank you Parimal Thanks. and thank you Pramod for being with us. Thank you. Thank you Samir. Okay. <laughs> and team. Yeah. Samir and Thanks. Team. Thanks.